Augustine was a Christian theologian and philosopher in early 400s. He wrote 100 books, 240 letters, uh, and over 500 sermons are recorded. But he was not always that way. He was, uh, he was quite different. Augustine became a professional orator. It was very important for him to be able to speak boldly with eloquence and persuasion. When he finished his studies, he goes to Rome and then later, uh, because of his unpleasant experience with his students, he moves to Milan and manages to secure for himself this position of rhetoric actually for a 12-year-old Caesar at that time who was ruling through his mother, Empress Justina. At a certain point of Augustine's life, he picks up this book called On Philosophy by Cicero, and it changes the way he thinks. It convinces him that it is absolutely important to know what the truth is. That became important for Augustine, and it set him on course of looking for that truth. At Milan, Augustine hears about Ambrose, Bishop of Milan. He also hears that Ambrose is a very good speaker. Naturally, he becomes intrigued. He goes to the church and he becomes a listener. He becomes somewhat a regular attender, actually. Uh, he likes the way Ambrose speaks. He continues to hear his sermons and the way he reasons through the scripture. He begins to understand gospel more clear. He begins to see the divinity of Christ. And there's this one account where uh, him and his friends, they spend time at this little cottage with the garden right next to it, studying philosophy. Um, and he, in tears, gets into his friend's face, asking Olypius, what is wrong with us? These uneducated, they are taking heaven by storm while we in our empty studies unable to achieve any of that. He storms into the garden looking for a dark place. He wants to be alone. He is in this deep distress. And he records this account in his confessions. And I quote, All I knew was that I was going mad, but for the sake of my sanity. And I felt like I was dying that I might live, aware of evil nature that I had, but unaware of the good I was soon to become. So in his agony, he engages in the conversation with God himself. He begins to pray saying, why should I keep living this life saying that I'll do it tomorrow? Why must I live the life of continuous procrastination? Why not put the end of my depravity this very hour? He hears the voice of children, as if playing around somewhere in the area, perhaps behind the fence. Uh, children playing keep repeating this verse, take up and read, take up and read. And thoughts start racing through his mind. He, he tries to remember any possible games that could contain this verse, any possible songs maybe that could have the saying in it, and he cannot think of anything. And he decides that I'll do it. I will go and I'll read. So he runs back to his place. On his table, among, among other material, he had uh, these uh, copies of uh, letters of Paul to the Roman church. He picks them up and starts reading. And his eyes lay on this verse. It's a chapter 13, verses 13 through 14. It goes like this, quote, Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify his desires. And then Augustine talks about it in his Confessions. 
And I quote, Soon after reaching the end of the verse, the light of certainty flooded my heart, and all dark shades of doubt fled away. <laughs>